Hey there, race fans. It's race day top five with me, Frank Five. There was some big news this weekend in Charlotte, Motor Speedway, and around the NASCAR community. While I was down there experiencing the race experience as a fan, there was some big news that came out regarding some new teams coming into the Cup Series next year and a couple of alliances that are coming along that are going along with it. Let's talk about what has been going on this past weekend regarding some of those new teams that are coming into NASCAR. So firstly, GMS Racing. Earlier this year, they announced that they would be forming a Cup Series team and would move to the Cup Series in 2022 with the next-gen car being produced. Now, the big question is at the time, would they run full-time or would they run part-time? They didn't announce it immediately, but this past weekend on race day, GMS Racing has announced that they will run full-time in the 2022 NASCAR Cup Series season. And their driver, well, it's an old face. GMS Racing's driver will be Ty Dillon. That's right. Ty Dillon's going to get to come back and run full-time in the Cup Series, driving the number 94 car. Kind of an odd number. They're paying tribute, according to this number, to Bill Elliott, who was the last driver to run the 94 car and had some success with it. He didn't win a race with that team, which was the team that he owned, but GMS Racing is hoping to change that narrative. Ty Dillon, if you remember, he has been in the NASCAR series for a long time. He's the younger brother to Austin Dillon. He's the grandson of Richard Childress. He won the ARCA championship in 2011 and then was promoted to the truck series in 2012, driving the three truck and won a race. Came close to winning the championship, but didn't happen. Then he moved to the Xfinity series in 2014, where he won the first ever, where he won his, won his first Xfinity series race at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, beating Kyle Busch. The following year, he would battle for championship. The, the next two years didn't really have the success or the experience he had the experience but he just he didn't have the success then in 2017 he moved to the cup series to drive for jermaine racing sponsored by geico and 2017 rookie season we talked about like you know we're talking about the year eric jones was really good you know damn suarez was really good i don't think ty Dillon got enough credit for his 2017 season he had an underrated year yes he didn't get a top 10 but he had a lot of top 15s and top 20 finishes which for that team with a rookie driver i would consider it a success the next year they struggled but they were able to get their first top 10 with ty Dillon at uh, the night race at daytona and then the next year they had a couple of good runs they won a couple of stages then 2020 came and they were a little more competitive than they used to be but towards the end of the season jermaine racing announced that they would shut down because COVID played a factor, and GEICO was not going to sponsor them anymore. They were still staying in NASCAR as one of their premier partners, but just not sponsoring a race team. So Ty Dillon was left without a full-time ride for 2021. So he picked up a couple of races and limited races for Gaunt Brothers Racing, uh, or Gaunt Brothers Motorsports, whatever you want to call it. He tried to attempt the Daytona 500, but missed it by that much when Ryan Priest, who's already locked in at the time, edged him out, so that would lock in Austin Sindrick. Ty Dillon missed the Daytona 500, and then he would attempt a couple more races later in the year. He attempted the Bristol Dirt Race. Uh, he ran a couple more races on the road courses. And he was also running part-time races for the Xfinity Series for our motorsports and Jordan Anderson Racing to help the 31 team get higher in the owner's points. And we were all wondering, would Ty Dillon even have an opportunity to get back to the Cup Series? Well, the last month or so, it had been reported that with GMS Racing going to test out their next-gen car at the Roval with everybody else, that Ty Dillon was the prime candidate to test the car and possibly land a full-time ride. Well, Sunday on race day, Ty Dillon is now back in the Cup Series as a full-time driver for 2022. I can't express how happy I am for Ty Dillon. He's a really nice guy. I mean, has he had the cars to win Cup races over the years? No, but this could be something. I mean, this team will get an alliance from Richard Childress Racing with ECR engines and equipment, and it's perfect. I mean, honestly, perfect because it keeps Ty Dillon connected with his grandfather and his brother uh, as far as relationships goes with this team. I think GMS Racing will be fairly competitive next year. I mean, we don't know what's going to happen with the next-gen car, but this is an opportunity of a lifetime for Ty Dillon to prove that he can bring a lot to this team and make them a championship contender or a race-winning contender here on out. Now, the one question that remains, will this team get a charter? Because there are so many things that's going on with the sport right now as far as, you know, buying charters, selling charters, acquiring charters. Will GMS acquire a charter? That's a question that remains to be seen, but I believe they will acquire a charter. They'll probably get one from one of the teams that made downsides to a couple of cars, and I'll talk about that certain team in a little bit, but I believe that GMS Racing will be able to acquire a charter. And if not, they'll have to qualify every race, but they'll probably have the speed. I'm sure, hopefully, at Daytona qualifying, they'll bring the best they can possibly give Ty Dillon to go up there and be one of the fastest two cars 
during a qualifying Wednesday night, which would lock them into the Daytona 500 and won't have to worry about racing their way in and possibly missing the show. So we'll see what happens with uh, the charter situation, but it's happy to see GMS Racing going to be, be going to go full time with Ty Dillon as the driver. And I can't express how happy I am for Ty, a chance to get back and show everybody that he can still drive a race car and he can possibly be a race winning contender. So watch out for Ty Dillon and GMS Racing next year. Now, the day before that, another team has announced that they will be running in the NASCAR Cup Series next year part-time. Did we see this coming? A Dutch team, Team Hezeberg, have announced that they will run a part-time schedule in the Cup Series next year with Loris Hezemond as their driver. He is a Dutchman, and his father, uh, Tony, I believe his name is, is a Dutchman as well. They've been winning the NASCAR Euro Series the last few years, and Loris has been really good this year. I think he may have won the Euro Championship? I can't remember. I don't. We. I don't watch the Euro series to be honest with you. But this is big for NASCAR. We're bringing more diversity into the sport. You know, we have Michael Jordan, an African American, owning 2311 with Bubble Balls as his driver. We have a Latino and Daniel Suarez driving for Trackhouse Racing with Pitbulls the co-owner. Now we have two Dutchmen coming into the sport uh, with this team, Team Hesseberg. They're scheduled to run the road course races next year and some short tracks. And it's also been reported that at, they had the test uh, earlier this week. Jacques Villeneuve, former Formula One champion, was a part of the test, and he's driven some NASCAR races in Cup, Xfinity, and Trucks before. Could he run a couple of races for that team next year? It remains to be seen, but I believe that this team is, you know, bringing in a lot of... What I'm trying to say is they're trying, you know, to build a team and try to build the organization in the sport. Uh, one of the things that I'm very intrigued about this team is that they're also getting powered by Rayum Brothers Racing, which is a NASCAR Truck Series team. Josh Rayum has been a NASCAR driver from time to time. I think he still drives, but mostly shifted to owner. They will be, be building the cars for this team. Now, are they going to run really competitively? Uh, again, with the next-gen car, we don't know a lot of things. I don't think so from the get-go. But as time progresses, who knows? But one thing this team is trying to do is they're trying to get Loris qualified to run these races and also have him qualified to be eligible to probably run full-time with this team in 2023. That is the goal. It's exciting to see a Dutch team coming to NASCAR. We we'll welcome you with open arms, and let's see what you guys can bring to the table. And the last bit of news that came down is that Rick Ware Racing, which has been in the Cup Series for the past couple of years and also running the Xfinity Series, they have announced that they will be forming a technical alliance with Stuart Haas Racing in 2022, and they will shift to running Fords for all their teams. Now, is this going to help improve Rick Ware Racing and make them a little more competitive? Again, it remains to be seen, but it's something that can help the value of this team. Now, they have been report, there have been reports regarding this team, they may downsize from four cars to what they have this year, down to three cars, or maybe even two. And that could mean a charter could get handed off to one of the teams. And some of those teams might need it, like GMS Racing and 2311 Racing for Kurt Busch, because apparently the reports that they were acquiring a charter from Formula Motorsports, they fell through. So, Rick Ware Racing has four charters. One of them is kind of aligned with uh, Richard Petty Motorsports, which is called Petty Ware Racing but it's still kind of under the Rick Ware racing banner, to be honest with you. Will they be able to sell some of those charters to those teams that need it, or will they still stay with a four-car operation next year? I don't know, but it'll be interesting to see how Rick Ware Racing performs next year. And Rick Ware is committed to the sport and committed to the Cup Series and wanting to get better and better. I'll be honest with you, their Xfinity program this year has actually been really underrated. They've had a lot of top 20 finishes here and there. They've run well. And the Cup Series this year... You know, they're still trying to build themselves as a cup team and try to be more and more competitive. I feel like they've done it a couple of races this year. Uh, will they do it next year? You know, with probably Cody Ware is one of the drivers, maybe Josh Balecki, Garrett Smithley, James Davison. They've got a lot of options. But I believe that Rick Ware Racing is still committed to being more and more competitive. I mean, they're not the slowest team in NASCAR. They're not. They're, they're, they're quite competitive to try to at least compete with some of the other backmarker cars and try to run up towards the front even more, and on the super speedways, they give it their best effort. So we'll see what happens, but a lot of news and storylines regarding GMS going full-time with Ty Dillon back in the Cup Series, a Dutch team, Team Hasenberg, with Loris Hesemann is going to be driving part-time, and Rick Ware Racing, uh, forming the lines with Stuart Haas and getting Ford cars for next year. Going to be very interesting in 2022, and we'll see how all these teams... Uh, progress next season. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the news report about all these teams and their new deals and new 
uh, drivers. It's going to be a lot of fun next year in 2022, and I can't wait. So, can't wait for the Cup race this upcoming Sunday at Texas Motor Speedway. It's going to be a blast. Uh, the round of eight begins, and we'll see what happens. So, have a good day, guys.